do. You're off beat. It's you. It's always you. Welcome to the program. My name is Dean. Uh, that's the harmonica by Lachlan Cross, who joins us today, as well as Ryan Lindley from the Sheeple Shepherd podcast. And a uh, really nice surprise. Please welcome to the program from Tech Savvy, former journalist. I don't know if you still dabble. Peter Nowak, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, from uh, Tech Savvy Solutions, uh, internet provider that uh, we're happy to be working with. And we've, uh, we're obviously here for a reason. Not only are we friends, we're also Blue Jays fans. I want to play this before. Like this guy, it, it, this is a guy you want to hang around with, Peter Nowak. Tech savvy solution. If you want to go to a baseball game and you want to catch a ball, this is the guy you go with, and I'll show you why. Here, watch mm-hmm. this really quickly. This is last year, and then we'll get to the story. Watch this. Somebody made a good grab, Tabby. Well, let's see. Oh yeah, with the glove, can of corn. <laughs> yeah. So that's Peter Nowak. That's uh, him right yes. here, ladies and gentlemen. Peter with an incredible sh- shoestring grab in the outfield um that that wasn't the first one you caught was it no that was actually uh or i can't remember if that was the first or the second but needless to say they came within uh two days of each other and i'm still waiting for that contract i like how he forgets so nonchalant too like yeah i I caught one ball in my life i remember where it was and what happened you actually it was last year when they the jays were just starting to come back if i'm not mistaken and I remember watching you tweet about it saying, sorry, that was my second catch. And it was a sweet <laughs> grab. And I'm like, fuck, Peter Nowak is, I'm, I'm mad at him. Yeah. I, you know. I, I'll say I'm a better fielder than Lourdes Gurriel Jr. But um, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't could, much. But do you have an arm? That's the thing, because he's got an arm. No, I would be yeah. in a hospital if I tried to throw a ball right now. <laughs> From outfield, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think of them? Uh, last night looked pretty good, didn't they? Three nothing. Uh, yeah, I was there. It was, uh, you know, they still fluked some runs uh, yeah. and and otherwise scored nothing. So it's still, but hopefully they get rolling soon. Yeah, they've had a tough go. Um, not why you you're here though. Really, here. what's that? The bats are bad this year. Well, it's just the slow start. Vlad had a hot start first couple of games this season, first few series and slow start. At least he's like, I don't know if you guys saw Marcus Simeon's numbers. I think he's hitting like 182 or something like that. A lot of guys have had slow starts, uh, but it's not that big of a deal. Like that's and, and, and here's the thing. When you watch these Blue Jays games, you're like expecting so much more every time they play. And I've been to two games this year and both games I've been to, they got absolutely shit housed. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. How is this possible? Is every time I go to a game, it's supposed to be a world beating team. I mean, they're still a great team, and, the, and it's still early, but still. I mean. There's still another eight or nine hundred games left for the season. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Lots yeah, exactly. of time. Lots That's of time. the frustrating <laughs> thing about baseball, right? Like yeah, exactly. Uh, Peter Nowak uh, is from Tech Savvy Solutions. We're doing some work with Tech Savvy. Pay less to connect.ca, and I really want people to pay attention to this because uh, we've got a big decision coming up, Peter. Uh, that the government can and and should, with the stroke of a pen, be able to make a decision for all Canadians in their benefit to lower interest, not interest rates, internet rates and wireless rates here in this country. We pay an egregious amount for our internet and it is, uh, it's in the hands of the government. It's in the hands of the three major internet providers in this country. Uh, and this has been a, in my, my opinion, a collusive process from the beginning. Uh, and we've yeah. got a bunch of news to get to, but uh, you're doing something for the Canadian people. You're doing something for this country. And I'd love to talk about it because we're working with you on this project and this campaign. And I think it's a wonderful thing. The reaction has been incredible. But talk a little bit about paylessToconnect.ca and what exactly it is that Tech Savvy is trying to do. Yeah, right. Well, that's a website that anybody can pretty much go to. And it takes about 15 seconds. You plug in your, your name and uh, your postal code and where you live. And uh, you can send a, a, a very quick uh, email to your member of parliament and basically there you're you're urging that member of parliament to support this appeal that tech savvy has in front of uh, justin trudeau and the federal cabinet right now and what that appeal is all about it's it's like one of these dry things it's about wholesale internet rates so already like people are nodding off listening to this but what it actually is about is wholesale internet rates are what small companies like tech savvy pay to the likes of Bell and Rogers 
the parts of their networks so that we can deliver internet services to our customers. And so what it does is that enables competition. So, you know, typically you have your choice of internet provider, depending on where you are in Canada, it's probably the phone company and the cable company, and that's it. And those guys are probably charging you an arm and a leg. So you got smaller companies like tech savvy that come in and we're, we're kind of like wholesale based providers to provide competition. The whole point of these companies is to provide competition from for those two companies, those two big companies, and therefore discipline them as far as where their prices can go. So for the past year, the CRTC basically raised those wholesale rates. That's the biggest cost that small internet providers have. And they raised those costs or they left them high, I should say. And what's that? what that's done is it's allowed the bigger companies to raise prices as they see fit. And it's killing these smaller companies. In Quebec, for example, uh, you had eBox, which is the biggest inter independent uh, internet provider. Just a few, uh, I think it was about two months ago or so, they just sold out to Bell. They just couldn't cut it. So uh, if these, if this appeal does not go through, a lot more of these smaller internet providers are going to have a hard time. Some of them are going to go out of business. You're going to have less competition, which means that Bell and Rogers and the other big guys are going to get to do what they want even more so than they already do now. Prices are going to go up. Yeah, I find this yeah, hard those, to believe, those... Peter, that, that these companies are not only screwing us individually with our cell phone bills and our internet, but they're also <laughs> screwing small business. Is that what you're saying? This is shocking to me. Not shocking to me. <laughs> you know, I was a journalist for 20 years and I covered this and, and uh, I saw it firsthand. Uh, you know, we've, I think you guys have talked about the, the and the beers that the chairman's had. He's buddies with this bell. Uh, you know, Ed, oh, Ed, oh, do you mean this? Do you mean this sweet picture? You mean this bad boy right here? Uh, that the back of the head is uh, belongs to a man named Ian Scott, who is currently the head and the chair of the CRTC. Uh, now, Ian, for this? Uh, well, he's under investigation now for this meeting and dozens of other meetings with not only Mirko Bibich, who's that's the guy across from him with the the giant schooner of beer. I got a little respect for that beer, actually. Um, and <laughs> no and this kidding. meeting, if I'm not mistaken, is illegal. I, I mean, this is this is untoward. This is something that is not supposed to be happening because the guy on the left is supposed to be regulated by the guy on the right. Right. Like that's the CRTC head is supposed to be regulating this guy's business and these meetings have not only been a bone of contention, but they've, 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 they've ended up costing what could be Peter. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Ian Scott is chairmanship for the next five years. It was announced the other day that he will not be renewed uh, by Pablo Rodriguez, the heritage minister who heads the CRTC. And on top of that, there's an investigation, I believe an ongoing investigation into those meetings that he had, and that wasn't one, right? Like we're talking dozens of meetings Countless. that he had with Rogers and mm -hmm. Bell. Am I not mistaken? Uh, well, we've seen at least 11 reported meetings uh, with lobbyists that appear to be solo. Um, that doesn't mean that they necessarily were solo, but they appear to be. Um, I've, you know, it's funny because I'm not a journalist anymore, but I do perform journalistic duties and I've been trying to get the records of those meetings. Uh, and of course, the CRTC has been delaying releasing information on that. Mm -hmm. the, the Office of the Information Commissioner has actually issued a, a number of rulings where they found that they broke their disclosure laws of this country by delaying those those, uh, those records releases. So you've got that on top of it all. Um, the, re the records that they have released, there's no notes, there's no agendas, no nothing. So we don't know what was said in those meetings, uh, you know. So there's all sorts of things going on here. And yeah, this is ultimately what it comes down to is, you know, Ian Scott is a, an admitted friend of Bell CEO Merkel Bibic. And, you know, should they be out uh, in public having beers? Uh, I think probably anybody in their right mind would say, no, that's there. That definitely should not be happening. There's that is completely against the established norms of, you know, what the appearance of bias bias is. Um, anyways, that's that's one side of it. The other side of it too is that this ultimately comes down to competition. Um, so the the government here, they've got until May twenty seventh to decide on this appeal that Tech Savvy has put in about those wholesale rates. And again, like it's this arcane uh, kind of really boring regulatory thing, wholesale rates. But ultimately, what this decision about is about is 
is the government going to stand up for consumers and say, yes, we're going to we're going to reverse that decision. And we can tell you right now it's going to lead to lower Internet bills. And boy, oh boy, do people need to lower their bills right now. I mean, have you been outside? Have you looked at the gas prices? Have you looked at grocery prices? Everybody in this country can use a break on some sort of bill. So this is a real test of this government. Are they going to step up for consumers or are they going to endorse the CRTC and this this beers approach with Bell? Uh, you know, that's that's kind of where we're at. Well, yeah, but that was like, if I'm not mistaken, that that those meetings kind of lead into. Sorry, Ryan, I just wanted okay. to kind of go back and touch on one thing real quick. Those meetings lead to the the decision that was made out of nowhere about a year ago, because I believe wholesale rates were supposed to come down. Tech savvy and other smaller providers like yourself uh, were 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 out there uh, planning business verticals and you know getting into wireless and giving to to give Canadians a cheaper option. Because that's what Canadians want. Canadians want to have the ability to choose. They don't want to be forced into paying for some kind of funnel. And so out of nowhere, the decision was made a few years ago to lower wholesale prices for Canadians, for other companies like yourself to increase competition, kickstart the economy, all that stuff. And then out of nowhere a year ago, this decision was made to say, and it was Ian Scott, if I'm not mistaken, that that made the decision. The CRTC put out a thing that said, by the way, we're going back to the old way we're doing it. Screw the wholesale drop in price. Uh, we're going to give uh, the big MSM providers exactly what they want. Is that what happened? And is that what this appeal is on the 27th that we're trying to get people to email their MPs for? Is that correct? Yeah, Dean, I think you know this issue better than I do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened in 2019, uh, yes, the CRTC issued this decision that said, you know what, uh, the likes of Bell and Rogers, you guys have been grossly inflating those wholesale rates. So we're going to, um, this is after three years of study of looking at evidence and, uh, you know, deputations and witnesses and all this stuff. Three years of study. This is the conclusion they came to. You guys are grossly inflating these rates. We're going to significantly lower them. Uh, companies like Tech Savvy were like, great, this is a, finally a win for consumers. It's a win for competition. At, at the time, Tech Savvy, a lot of the other smaller guys lowered prices as a way of saying, yes, you did the right thing, CRTC. Uh, so right after that, you know, of course, the big guys appealed that decision from the CRTC. And that photo, the Beers photo, was taken just days. There it is again. I do have to applaud. It looks like Ian is drinking a Guinness. Uh, so I at least applaud his choice of beer. Uh, yeah, the other guy's photo. drinking an IPA, and only losers drink IPAs. Oh, hey, well, hey you know, I like IPAs. I take exception with, to that remark. I but like uh, sorry. <laughs> anyways, we digress. That photo was taken days after Bell filed its appeal of that 2019 ruling. This is in December. That's December 19th, 2019. That could uh, just be a coincidence. Totally, totally. <laughs> Very, co it's coincidental. There's some debate too about what that thing is on the table. We're not sure if that's a file folder of things that Bell wants or if it's actually just a menu from the bar. But anyway, uh, neither here nor there. So that you probably you Ian's it. resume because he's going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> you got it exactly right. So uh, you know they they did this three years of study. They came up with these rates that they thought they thought were reasonable and just. Uh, prices were set to go down. Oh, the other side of it too is that the the big companies, because they had uh, grossly inflated these rates for years, were supposed to. They're on the hook for uh, hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, analysts estimated to repay to smaller internet providers for that overcharging uh, of years, and uh, so that's another thing that got reversed last year. Last year, basically, as you said, uh, the CRTC came out arbitrarily and said. You know what? We're going to scrap those 2019 rates that we spent three years coming up with, and we're going to scrap all that repayment that was owed to these companies. And uh, when that happens, you know, companies like Tech Savvy, we said, well, you know, we had all these plans to build new networks. We had a plan to get into the wireless business and, and you know, try to provide some competition there. All of that out the window, layoffs, uh, as, as I mentioned off the top, e-box, out of business, you know, it's just it's decimated competition in this country. Pays to Ryan, pick sorry, up. I was going to say pays to pick up the tab when you go out with Ian. Apparently, <laughs> um, uh, and it's a net zero cost to the government, isn't it? To to just to just go forward with this, it would be a, it would be them them putting that Nothing. money, right? All it is, it, it's it's so uh, it's almost cliche. It's a stroke of a pen. That's all I have to do. The decision is waiting for them. All I have to do is reinstate it. 
And Here's they, my they, issue, Peter. Um, and, sorry, and again, can we let, let let's let's let Linz finish that that okay, thought because I right. think he had a couple he wanted to follow up. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. I just it was it was uh, along the lines of the the one thing that they they use as a as an excuse is obviously the big three. They put all the infrastructure in, and you hear people say, "Well, they got to get paid back for the all the infrastructure." What they don't realize is a lot of that was subsidized by the government. A lot of that is actually our money that we already paid for, but they take credit for 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 it, right? So. I understand having to get yours, but how many years do we have to pay them to get theirs, you know? And it, and that continues to be the case too. Um, you know, all these companies, they're getting hundreds of millions of, do uh, millions of dollars in subsidies to build uh, networks, to expand networks. I mean, uh, you know, I think pr probably every telecom provider in the country is getting some form of subsidies from the government to, you know, help expand uh, networks to places that don't have them, to places that don't have service. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, Tech Savvy certainly is getting uh, some of those subsidies as well. But I mean, not nowhere near to the same extent as these big companies. We're talking huge amounts of dollars there um and these are you know it's funny because they always threaten we're not going to expand our networks we're not going to build our networks unless you give us what we want unless you exempt us from regulation unless you cut down the competition and so on and so on but then they do it anyways and they have to do it because you know somebody's going to come along and eat that lunch anyway if you look at parts of rural canada you know our our, our good buddy elon musk is out there rolling out his uh, satellite service starlink and where you see Starlink happening, uh, you see these companies building networks too, because uh, lo and behold, suddenly they have a competitor. So they have to do it. it. The threats are hollow and they just never materialize. But, you know, unfortunately, policymakers often buy into those to those threats. Peter, I'm a bit of a cynic. And the first thing that I'm concerned about, like that when we, we started talking about having you back on the show, we talked a little bit about... Um, you know, the, the importance of this, this May 27th deadline. Here's my concern. Politicians will always want to celebrate the things that they, they're doing for us. My concern is, is that they're not sitting there. I haven't seen them celebrating this, that look at what we're going to do for you. Look, this vote's coming, and this is look at look at what we're we're looking out for you. I haven't seen that. I've seen you promoting this vote, and I've seen every other politic all like politicians being very quiet about. Does that concern you? Oh yeah, very. It's very concerning. Um, you know, in the past when we've seen bad, uh, really bad decisions, I remember way back. Like I, I've been when I was a journalist, I was covering this for so many years. I remember, I think it was like 2006 or so where the CRTC issued this decision where they were going to, um, you know, basically allow the big companies to start forcing smaller companies to charge people uh, by the by the gigabyte. This is at home, not on wireless. Um, and the industry minister at the time, this was under the conservative government, it was Tony Clement. Uh, he went, I think he went on Twitter like the day of and said, oh, hell no, like this is not gonna happen. Like nobody even had to appeal before he went on Twitter and said, we're gonna reverse this unless the CRTC does it itself. And, and of course, never came to pass. So kudos to kudos to Tony Clement many years later. Um, the fact that it's, you know, governments have a year to, um, to basically deal with these types of appeals. And the fact that we've come to the end of that year, the, that's not comforting. Uh, the other thing is too, is a year ago, almost, uh, I think it was about 13 months ago in April of 2021, the CRTC issued another bonehead decision, which was all about wireless. And it was about these mobile virtual network operators. Uh, these would have been companies that were, uh, you know, could offer wireless services, basically piggybacking on the networks of Bell Rogers and TELUS. Uh, the CRTC basically denied that, like they denied forcing open those networks. And so there was a company called Dot Mobile that was that appealed that decision to the cabinet, just like we've appealed uh, that this wholesale thing to cabinet. And cabinet denied that appeal last month. Uh, in April 2022. So that's concerning too. You know, they had an opportunity to really do something about wireless competition there and they didn't take it. So yeah, we're, we're, uh, I'm concerned. And you know, it also goes back to that old truism, which is that good news happens fast and bad news takes forever. So I, I'm concerned. Uh, I remain mildly optimistic. <laughs> yeah. I think the hard yes. work you're doing right now is really going to pay off though. Yeah. In 
Like, well, and and I think that you've got listen, you've got a lot of support, right? This is for Canadians. This is for small business. This is about the economy, and it's about the individual consumer. And there's about thirty five million of them. So. Uh, as much as we can marshal to go to payless to connect.ca to connect in literally is 15 seconds. Uh, it's something that tech savvy has been doing for you, for Canadians, for us. And we're happy to jump on this as a partner. Uh, but what you want to do is go to payless to connect.ca. Uh, you've only got nine days, literally nine days until this appeal or decision on this appeal has been made. So you need to get in touch with your MP. You can do it. It literally takes 15 seconds. It'll Put out an auto post and you can encourage other people to do the same because this is about you. Tech Savvy isn't just fighting for your business. They're fighting for you because that's what good service people Canadian do. That's what we are. That is what the people at Tech Savvy are. And we're super proud to be partnering with you on this. Uh, Peter, I know you got a hard out. Uh, if you catch a baseball at the next Jays game, screw you. Just wanted to You're never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks very much for having me on again. Uh, like you said, Dean, 100% agree with you. This isn't about tech savvy. This is about nope. competition. Uh, if you know, if this, if we happen to get the right decision, by all means, everybody should go out and choose whoever the hell they want for their internet provider. But we're we're trying to to. Uh, keep it so that people actually have that option to do so. Uh, so thanks, thanks very much for your support. Oh, and again, true. pay less to connect. Oh, I should say, uh, just because May twenty seventh is a deadline doesn't mean that that's it's definitely the decision is coming on May twenty seventh. Could happen before then. So get off your couch, go downstairs, get, pick up the phone. Fifteen do it right seconds, now. fifteen right seconds. Right pay right less to connect. Right. Ca super easy. Peter, uh, tech savvy. Thank you so much. Really appreciate. it. We'll talk to you soon, brother. Thanks, guys. All right, man. Thanks There's uh, work, man. Peter Noah I'm gonna, uh, from Tech Savvy Solutions. What's that? I'm gonna I'm gonna go do that right away. I, do yeah, do they, like if I use some salty language in my letter, will they ignore it? Um, asking for a friend. You, don't I, even you can you can leave a message. You don't even need to. You just you just it's all automated. So what you do is you go to paylessconnect.ca right here. You see that it's like, hey, this is how much time you have time you have left to help uh, the government understand how important it is to lower internet rates because they're the highest in the free fucking world. Uh, and then you go to the, it takes you to this next spot. You can do uh, a little character. You can do a little comment. You can do whatever you want. I, I would, I wouldn't swear and get all angry and aggro at it because you want your MP to take this seriously. You want the person you're emailing and you're sending this to, to go, you know what? This person has a need and we need to fill that need. And there is a solution here. Do you know how much goodwill there would be for the Trudeau government to say, you know what? Cut those fucking rates in half. Cut them in half. Especially now, like especially right now with the way like everything's inflation, yeah. inflation, this everything's uh, skyrocketing. And this won't cost us as a taxpayer or Nothing. the government a Nothing. dime. It, it, it's it free it right back on Bell, Tellus and Rogers. Is so, there an emoji for grabbing your ankles? <laughs> you just like showing your ass on this show every every chance you can. What I like about that is when you put your postal code in, it yeah. auto populates your uh, MP's Twitter handle. You don't even right have to, to look it up. Yeah. It'll do it for you. It's really cool. You have to yeah, do nothing. Do that right now. That's yeah. the that's the amazing part of what Tech Savvy's done and you're right is that they've made it uh so that all you have to do is just fucking click a couple of things and your MP gets a shitty little note like, "Hey, this and is It doesn't matter to me. that Tech Savvy is based out of Ontario. No, I can still no. do it in, in Alberta, Absolutely. right? Because Absolutely. I'm just saying this that out federal. loud because people real need to realize that I this is a this is this is where we we have a voice, right? We really don't decide who actually runs the country in the West, but this this is give him a minute, go. dude. There's a reason <laughs> for that, by the way. Yeah, let's hear. There's a reason, reason for why that. You, Ottawa. that we don't. No, no, no. I know why. Freedom convoy. Because you guys are going to be serving you cheese guys, flavored you fucking ice cream at your goddamn stampede yeah. this year. Did you see that? You're serving a craft that. dinner ice cream I'm at the gonna, Calgary Stampede. Going, we can't. You're not. You can't you allow can't people that invent that shit with the keys to the kingdom. You can't. Listen, I will be having that because it's going to be <laughs> a case. Yeah, Karima, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, hey. Karima Saad is in the house. Yeah, Surprise. baby. I didn't even know you were coming. Surprise! Yeah. Craft dinner ice cream. That sounds really special. Oh. Yeah. That's the word it, I use too. It's it sounds disgusting. Did you see now, that the Calgary Stampede listed a list of the food that they're going to be uh, serving people at the Stampede? Linz, you posted it on your Twitter feed at Ryan Lindley. Craft dinner ice cream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, KD ice cream. Who the fuck's eating that? 
Oh, it'll be popular. They do weird stuff. Every year they have like 20, 30 plus new items at these midways, and it's always something fucked up. Uh, this year they've got a grilled, they got a glazed donut grilled cheese. So they take two glazed donuts, smash a grilled cheese sandwich in between it, and they sell that bad boy. I fat, fucking fat. will be eating that. Plug your ears for a second, Krima. Fat Ryan is getting hard right now. Hearing that right now. Just saying. Old Ryan? Old fat guy Ryan? I'd be, so on, hard. I'd be on that. Oh, my God. Would Fat Ryan eat this, though? Would Fat Ryan eat the Calgary Stampede KD Go sauce? Away. Try it. Looks like a baby took a shit in a cup is what it looks like. <laughs> I have, my kids used to have shit that color every once in a while. Exactly. It was That's a special day. It looks like a baby shit in a cup. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Karim Asad, ladies and gentlemen, uh, at Karima Rules on Twitter. Uh, she is a gonzo journalist. She's a lawyer. Sadvocacy.com is her website. She's a landlord, tenant lawyer. But more importantly, she's my friend. How are you, kid? You all right? I'm good. I had a good day. Did you? Why? Awesome. Are you slaying trolls? Were you, you taking know, names and kicking troll ass? Getting, uh, getting stuff done. Making money moves, let's say. Making money moves. Making money. Ooh, how exciting is that? I'd like to know. Not my money. Is. Not not to me. It's not moving to me, but for other people. It's making know, other people's money. Moves. <laughs> yeah. Um. You, you're still out on the street. As last week, you were you were kicked out of a freedom convoy, which is really interesting. You keep getting kicked out of these things. Which, by the way, the only thing better than being allowed into them to record it is being kicked out of them before you get there. <laughs> yeah. Again, um, the consequence, guys. Yeah. And you She's also getting way more press when you don't let her in. Yeah. So keep it up. Losers. Fuck, it's unbelievable. Uh, so you didn't get let into this last one in Welland. Crying shame. Uh, and then, you know, the week before that, you're at a Doug Ford rally uh, who's running for premier, and you got kicked out of that bad boy by some Stephen Lecce looking biatch. So uh, anyway, long story short, um, everywhere Doug Ford goes, there's a major problem. And it happened again yesterday. I'm going to play you the video. Locke, I don't know if you've seen this. I did. Um, I didn't understand what was going on. Well, I'll and play it for oddly, you. And Doug Ford was running away from it too, like <laughs> or waddling with his wife behind him, just yeah, yeah. pushing him. As did you notice that he <laughs> had a he had a meeting with a cheesecake? I think. <laughs> well, that's. I was looking at it, going, "There's, there's a reason why he's moving so fast." Oh, yeah. cheesecake meeting. It reminded me of Trump and Melania. How he's always like just out front. Yeah, she kind of brings up the rear, and he's like, yeah. listen, I don't care what you do with her, but let me get into that building and don't let anybody touch me. That was the real vibe I got. Anyway, Who more, Doug Ford or Donald Trump? Doug Ford. Fordsy. Oh, Ford. Fordsy? Sure. Fordsy. Donald's yeah. got more weight, our height. Yeah, he's 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, Fordsy's, I think, a good six feet tall, though. I think he's not a small Oh, guy. is he? I thought yeah, Fordsy yeah, yeah. was shorter. He's got to be close to three bills. He has to be. He's oh, he's more than eight. three bills. Dude. You think he's more than three bills? Oh, yeah, that's definitely Ryan's more than like, three bills. I think he's three and a half bills. I'm, gonna, guy. Uh, he knows. I'm gonna say he's probably at least three fifteen, three twenty. Three twenty. Yeah, yeah. He looks. Like hey, he got bigger over that pandemic. Like he was, he was horking that cheesecake back. Really <laughs> sure he was. So. Sure he was. Anyway, because Donald uh, Trump is three bills. Well, oh, he did that, sure and he did that Northern Ontario tour where every picture was him eating something fried, some fried fish, fried fries, fried <laughs> chicken. Fried, like he was. It was like Doug, have a salad. Listen, Dude, let's not judge too harshly. <laughs> they have yeah, vegetables yeah, exactly. up north. It's great. Um, so I'm going to play this video. Now, Karima, you were here for this, and uh, you've got a couple of contributions to, to this. I want to get your thoughts. But uh, this broke yesterday, and Ryan, um, you and I were talking about this last night. Uh, I couldn't believe it wasn't like in the news because this is like two days old. This is at Doug Ford's leadership debate uh, that he had the other night. Uh, nurses go to protest. Uh, and Doug Ford's personal security uh, took it upon themselves to legitimately beat the shit out of our healthcare professionals. Here's the video. Watch this. You 
just broke a nurse's face. They're a pandemic. A lot of fun, eh? That's a mess. A lot of fun last night. A lot of fun. Doug it was Ford. the night before, but the the people started talking about this yesterday. Yeah, um, which is a problem for me because uh, that 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 came to me from this beautiful nurse named Lori, and she tagged me in a D in a just a tweet, and that was about seven o'clock last night, Lindsay. Is that correct? Yeah, it was about seven or eight o'clock last night. I so didn't she, see, we didn't see any of this in the news. No, yeah, not back. Well, here. There's a reason for the it. The only reason, the only reason we saw it was on the on your web page. That's the yeah. only reason I watched the video. Yeah, it's still the only article out. I believe Blog To just put something out and cited Kareem in it, but that's it. That is it. Yeah, and I'll get to that was, in just a second. There was a, uh, I think it was a Globe and Mail article that uh, said a protester was injured. Yeah, it fell down. No details though. No. no. And then uh, you know CP24 kind of mentioned it, but said that it appeared someone fell down. Uh, that person didn't fall down. If you saw the start of the video, I'll play it for you again. Uh, you can clearly yeah, see this this gentleman, and I'll show you who it was, pushed this nurse head first into the ground, concussed, had to rush to the hospital. And uh, Karima, that's where you'll come in. But watch the start of this video. We won't watch the whole thing, but, but watch it again. Watch. There he goes. Now, now that nurse that got pushed to the ground was pushed to the ground uh, by this gentleman. Here's the video. Here's the picture. Uh, this is the actual picture of the nurse that got pushed. Uh, the reason why they got pushed, according to some people that we spoke to, is that, and that's the, the, the man on the ground head first, bleeding out of the head, injured his leg as well, uh, cuts, scrapes, a bad concussion. Um, we are still trying to find out who this person is. But that person was pushed by one of Doug Ford's personal security guards that were making room for the bus to be able to pull up so Doug wouldn't have to walk an extra 10 feet. So that nurse, well, that healthcare professional, uh, Doug, have to worry about uh, sanctioned the injury to that person because he just couldn't walk an extra 10 feet. So, uh, Karima, you were there. You saw this kind of percolate. Um, and, and you've been covering, you know, every weekend for two years, these protests where, you know, Doug Ford has been telling everybody they have a right to be there. You should leave them alone. Let them protest in peace. And then we see nurses who are on the front line of the COVID pandemic ask for because he froze their wages that's why these ladies are protesting bill 124 has a wage freeze for healthcare professionals so they show up and they're like hey doug we we don't want you to freeze our wages." it's legitimately the one thing he was standing up for for that community was their ability to do that they go there and do that his bus can't pull right up to the front so he has one of his douchebags personal security guards literally hurt a nurse and then drag a couple of other nurses i don't know if you saw the uh the that, that young lady um who was laying on the ground drag her across the pavement, drag a female, a human female across the pavement who was exercising her God-given ability and, and her citizenry to be able to protest what she thought was really important. And I believe it is important that we pay our healthcare professionals. So you were there. What did you think? So I didn't actually see this part go down, right? Um, I saw that there was someone on the floor, that there was an ambulance. Um, it wasn't really clear what had happened, um, but definitely it was a chaotic scene. And having watched the video now, which provides a different vantage point, um, this is far more heavy handed um, than, 
pretty much any of the protests that I've seen um, in in Toronto, like the the freedom, so-called freedom protests, right? Um, other protests also get heavy-handed treatment, um, but th this was very hands-on um, and 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 disturbing because over the course of having two years of these sort of freedom marches, I think that we have normalized a certain level of annoyance towards protest and, you know, people call for police enforcement and action and shut this down, um, which, you know, is all contextual. Uh, but this is legitimate civil discourse, um, dissent, and uh, it was, the, I would construe that as as a form of political violence. Uh, and that's very, very disturbing. Mm. Mm. I don't think we should democracy. downplay the significance of the f of freedom as a reason to protest this country, Karima. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, what Karima and I, we agree, I, uh, as I do the think rest of them. freedom is very important, especially in Canada. It was freedom in Where it's quotes. being constantly taken away bit by bit. The royal freedom. <laughs> yes. So it, please don't... Please don't disintegrate our freedoms yeah. on this podcast as well. Yeah, please. And, and don't and don't think that we're being hypocritical. If you remember, remember when we watched I just that video? All that to a friend of mine. Of He's David not have under any the, clue what the fuck I'm talking about. Well, that's going in too. Go ahead, uh, uh, Ryan. Go ahead. Sorry. That that video of David. Watch thinking out loud again. That's apparently. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 Um, that video of David Menzies when he was out front waiting for Trudeau. Remember and the RCMP gently guided him and guided mm -hmm. him and you know like just walked him away from where he was supposed to be this is the diff and this is why it is different this is different you can't say well you know they treat one different and well what if they showed up with hot tubs and, and closed the street down for three weeks would that but okay probably mm -hmm. not they would have been thrown out of there just as fast so Karima, we just saw jagmeet singh exit a building um, to a chorus of you're not welcome here get out don't touch my children like, fuck Jesus. you, you liar, whatever. And, and he, you know, had to make it to his vehicle and his security didn't deck anybody. Nope. He the didn't. police weren't even there. Although he probably would have been capable of it himself. Yeah. Uh, two different ways to handle the same. violence, <laughs> but that would have been a much better video to watch if he would have turned around. And, wow, what the, 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 I don't remember when it was, but there was one moment where he was somewhat less than gracious when someone came up to him and said something racist and everyone had a field day about how, you know, he's reacting too angry and this is, you know, this isn't right and blah, blah, blah. Um, and meanwhile, we have nurses being shoved to the ground, um, you know, from, from what it looks like. So these are, yeah, th this is uh, not good. Yeah. That's it's political issue. You mentioned it earlier and it's an interesting topic, right? It's, 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 um, it's political tyranny. Uh, while he, the guy's smiling, he's having his security people that are in his way hurt those people because they have a dissenting view, because Doug Ford doesn't give a fuck about nurses, because Doug Ford froze their wages, because Doug Ford has made their jobs immeasurably more difficult by releasing masking uh, and mandates and restrictions and vaccine restrictions. I mean, you know, the, the cascade of where this comes from and what you can put into the conversation to hang this around his neck as like, hey, listen, that is part and parcel of and a great example of how he is legitimately treated all of the constituents of this province, right? Like they're a fucking afterthought to his goal, right? Which is how do I get from here to there for me and my family? How do I enrich the lives of my friends? How do I help others and that 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 and, and at the same time shut out or kill uh, thousands of Ontarians? And I'm I'm just gonna bring this up, okay? Is this is this is like from yesterday? It's an update of the COVID deaths in Ontario. Since we've dropped masking restrictions January 1st to yesterday, we've had 3,300 deaths in 138 days, right? July 1st to December 31st, same time frame, we are, sorry, 50 days less, actually, even worse. They saw 1,026 deaths in 184 days. So prior to actually releasing the masking and mandate restrictions, we were at about 5.6 deaths per day. Doug, because he hates you and doesn't give two fucks about you and your health and your family and, and uh, loved ones and people who are, 
infirmed or those who might have um, pre-existing conditions, that number is three times the amount in 50 less days, 23.9 deaths a day. That is a daily death increase of 327%. There were 65 more deaths in the last six days. Total deaths in Ontario, by the way, most of them avoidable. 13,099 people have died. And of those 13,000, 3,300 have died in the last 138 days since we've dropped masking restrictions. And do you know why we haven't heard about it? Anyone? Do you know why we haven't heard? Candy said so. Second best summer ever, everybody. I'll take a a stab. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to yeah, say it's it's the it's it's those relationships that we're always talking about the working relationships between the political uh, conservatives or the progressive conservatives I believe they call them and the media. There you go. Do you we're want me to show you that? On? Talking about COVID still. Do you want me to sh- you want me to show you that on a slide? To be fair, I have it. Though, no, nobody's talking about COVID like that. It's no, just, that's, we've no got but fatigue. that's not the point. That's not the know, point. He's talking about COVID. It's talking about people who've died unnecessarily and the fact yeah. that we're not talking about it when it was consuming us for fucking 24 months yeah. consuming us and now all of a sudden it's over here's why let me put this up canadian newspaper federal election endorsements with ownership i want you to notice all the post media accounts here post media is owned by a company 66 percent by a company out of the united states called chatham wealth or asset management the guys that run it on the border, hard right. Trump supporters, massive Trump supporters. They are absolutely 100% in to the conservative theocracy that we're seeing destroy this country and North America by and large. Now, as we go through this and we see who owns what, you can absolutely see why Doug Ford's beating of nurses didn't get any time in any newspaper in this fucking country. Because every single one of them is pledging to support Doug Ford in this election or a conservative federally or provincially. That is what this is. It is nothing else other than that. And that's why we don't hear about deaths like 3,300 of them in 138 days. That's why we don't see videos of these nurses getting their asses kicked when they're asking for meager pay raises for saving our miserable lives for the past two years. That is why this country is in fucking trouble. Canadian media hasn't just failed. They've done this on purpose. And the people at Post Media that are owned 66% by an American asset management company that is led and the board is all hard righty Trump supporters, Trump providers, all those guys. Are you seeing it now? Like, are you seeing this? Here's another one, a guy named Corey Tenike. Corey Tenike is a Harper acolyte. He was also the publisher of the Toronto Sun for many, many years. Guess who runs the Conservative Party of Ontario? Corey Tenike. Guess who's running Doug Ford's entire platform? Guess who comes up with his policies? Guess who tells him to show up to debates with binders? Guess who hides him? Corey Tenike. What was he the editor of? The Toronto Sun. Who are his connections to a post media? The board of directors. This is not new. This is not new why we don't hear things, why we don't see things, why we as a country are in the dark when it comes to really terrible things that people in power do. And it doesn't stop there. We just had Peter Nowak on from Tech Savvy Solutions talking about the collusion between government and mainstream media or telcos in this country. But this somebody is, needs to look after Bell and Telus and, and have any money. Rogers. I mean, they they need their share too, Dean. Yeah. Right. Again, if anybody knows of an ankle grabbing emoji, I need that for my. <laughs> but are you like like Karima? When you go out there, yeah, right? Like like that was this is the video that you took. Let's just play the video that you took from the actual event, and I want to know why you didn't post it. Okay, before. Let's watch it. Now, that video actually made it into blog to you. Um, and they actually, I believe, I don't know if they contacted you, but they're the only other people that are talking about this. But why wouldn't you post that? 
So initially, I wasn't sure what had happened. Um, and in that video, you see someone who is clearly in pain. It's not a pleasant moment. And without knowing kind of if there was any public interest to that, um, it didn't seem appropriate to, to put that online. Um, and so it wasn't until um, you were tagged in that post yesterday that, you know, I saw what led up to that. And suddenly it seemed much more relevant to the conversation about what is what is happening and how people are being treated and dealt with and you know what the mo of this premier is because you know when i was kicked out of that campaign uh launch event um don't forget that the security people followed me while i was halfway out of the the parking lot and said you know keep it moving, you know, you want us to help you. Uh, we wouldn't want you to get hurt. Um, so like, this is all very- That was a veiled threat. Like that's, the, when I saw that video of you on your scooter and, and the truck, I was like, they just threatened Karima. Mm -hmm. I, I like, I was shocked by that. I literally had to get off my scooter and stop to talk to them. So I was truly on my way out. I wasn't loitering or trying to hang out in the parking lot or anything like that. I was on my way out. I was talking to Dean um, and, and I physically had to stop to talk to them. And yeah, I felt threatened. And and so seeing that it actually can manifest into something physical uh, is is scary. Is this something like, did it make you sorry? Does it make you like think that that could have been it could have been you when they followed you out of his event and threatened you? Uh, Maybe I am naive to think, no, I didn't actually expect anyone to hop out of the truck and like start wailing on me. Um, so it, it just puts in perspective that what I kind of construed as a verbal form of intimidation um, for yeah. others and in a different circumstance could have been physical. Um, so it, it's, you know, it, it's just... Maybe, Where does that line get drawn? Me, well, it's clearly you're not a nurse or a teacher. Why do these governments hate teachers and nurses? Like they're I mostly don't women. Understand they're it. mostly women, and they play a very sort of, you know, not to stereotype kind of the the concept of nurturing, but you know, they're either rear like helping with children, right, which is education, and you know. Conservatives don't necessarily love education um, or want people to do uh, well in that in that field, and, and it's again mostly women um, and and nursing same same deal right where like these are very you're, you're dealing with patients with people who are vulnerable um, and there's not a lot of regard for our vulnerable whether it's seniors whether it's um, disabled people whether it's children. Um, and so these are common themes and trends. And, and you know, Bill 124, there, there was no application as far as I'm aware to police officers. So their their salaries aren't being capped. So, you know, what are we valuing? So this is a reflection of values, I, I would say. Yeah. yeah. It, it's interesting because, I mean, every time a conservative government gets into power, and I understand the union connection and all that. I'm not an idiot, but every time a conservative uh, uh, government gets into power, the first thing they do is they start slashing um, nurses and, and teachers. And I, I've, I've said this out loud for years. Uh, listen, anybody who is willing to wipe grandma's ass for you or teach your shithead kids should make more money than anybody else. I'm sorry. Put yourself in a classroom. Put me in a classroom with um, like grade six, grade sevens for a week. It is not going to end well. We don't need to say out loud what's going to happen. But I'm telling you right now that if you've got somebody that's wired, that's able to do that, they, and I don't give a fuck that they get summers off. Give them whatever money they want. And if you've got somebody that is wired to the point where they can take care of your family members when they're in need, I'm telling you, they deserve whatever. And this is deep. Just take fucking COVID out of it. Yep. They deserve whatever they want want stop bitching about it my god it drives me insane it really does well, the, they're cleaning the, up shit they're teaching your shithead kids end of story give them all the fucking money they want yeah all the money they they, they they go uh 
they don't realize that the right, the conservatives have always had this weird, myopic, short-sighted tunnel vision that investment in education, they don't see the benefits that, that are reaped 10, 20, 30 years down the road in that investment. Like, and that's how it's supposed to be. Every other developed nation that has comprehensive education programs, healthcare, they're thriving. They're above us in every index. We just can't seem to get it through our fucking thick, protruding foreheads that we need to do the same thing. We have to spend that money now to not break the system. We just watched it over two years. Everybody's like, hospitals are crumbling. Yeah, well, that's right. That's why you, have to, you can't fucking, you can't just build a hospital. You need to put fucking nurses in the hospital. Nobody wants the job now. And our government did that. Our government to made it so fair, nobody wants that fucking job. We need more money for the tech companies. Right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> who's looking out <clears throat> That's for true. the tech companies? Brian? Exactly. And media. Who's looking out for me? Karima, go ahead. It's, I know it's you only short-sighted that. if, you know, we start from the presumption that the goal is to better society. So it's not short-sighted mm. if that's not your objective. You're, you're right. Yeah. You're right, because they, it's, it's all about that short-term gain. They're, they're looking for that short-term uh, burst of, of, you know, either their own power, empowering their friends uh, to, to down the road when they leave politics, they get a cushy job somewhere else. It's the long game. It works out the long game for conservatives, for them. though. Yeah, for them, but not for the conservative voter. And that's what I mean about the thick, protruding fucking heads. They don't realize you're voting against your own fucking best interests every single time. Mm -hmm. Every time. Mm -hmm. Every single social issue in this world. You know where it ends up? In an ER. Every one of them. Every single social issue. Education, yeah. poverty, uh, drug abuse, like addiction. It all ends up in the ER. Mental and illness. Money. Yeah. Mental yeah, I mean, illness. And, and look at what Doug cut from in this budget that he won't show anybody. He cut billions from all of those areas that you're talking about, whether it be mental health, whether it be physical health, education, homelessness, homelessness all those things. Like, yeah. And everything he's driving into the economy and economic relationships and businesses, which is why we saw we saw he doesn't give two fucks about nurses. He doesn't care about human beings. He doesn't even care about his own family. And that much I know. He hates his own family. As a matter of fact, well, if they weren't around, he'd be fucking happier. No, I mean, nobody his is. Kids are annoying. And and on top of him hating his own family, if he hates his family, do you think he's got disdain for teachers that are going, hey, we want to get paid more because we just spent literally two years trying to cover for your incompetence. And by the way, people are dying at a record rate again. And those women are standing there and those men are standing there with signs going, just pay us what we're worth. That's all we're asking. And you know what Doug does? Sends a security guard to beat the shit out of him. Now, has there <laughs> been other episodes where his his security in the past has gotten out of hand, or is this is this a new thing? Kareem, I don't know. You would know. Kareem would know best, I think. If I'm not mistaken, um, and I don't know what year this was, but I I, I know that he interfered in some way with the way that OPP sort of security around him was handled. Um, and, and so I don't know. I don't know if this is a common thing. I'm not aware of any specific incidents, um, no. but I wouldn't have been aware of this if it weren't for Twitter and just sort of a fortuitous algorithm, right? So what do I not know about? I don't know. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. I mean, there's lots that we don't know. Lots that we, when, when they're willing to do that. Is that not illegal? Like, are we? I haven't heard. And and again, fuck you, Bell. Fuck you, Rogers. Fuck you, CBC. Fuck you, traditional print for not talking about this. For not for not because you know why you're not doing it. You're not doing it because you don't want to hurt you hurt the man that that you think is feeding you. And here's the problem, right? Is that you've lost all credibility over the past couple of years. And guys like us are eating your shit. Do you know how many clicks are in telling the truth? A lot. You know, you know how much attention and influence there is in advocating for 15 million people? A ton. Like a ton. And that goodwill is gone, right? Like, you, I don't believe anything. Like, Colin DeMello has been tagged in this, CTV, CP24, all those, all the same customers, all the same people. Not a word. Zero. Nothing. Nada. Because what do we got? 12, 14 days until the election? Is that correct? June 2nd, 14 days. 
it is a full court press to get this guy elected to the point where people that hold public broadcast licenses are not talking about news because they're suppressing it. And the reason why they're suppressing it is because they absolutely have a vested interest in Doug Ford and the mm -hmm. Conservative Party winning in this country, in this province again. And we're allowing it to happen, right? Can All I, of us can are. I, can I add to that quickly? Yeah, please. Yeah. I, I think these organizations, these media outlets, organization should be embarrassed by this too because 100%. there's a guy on this panel with a ted nugent shirt on right now and he's doing hard news <laughs> oh my god yeah that's oh, cat scratch fever, fever baby you're right better i not, mean yeah. that's not tell him to take a vaccine for that fever that, that's the whole problem right i mean you know and, and it's I don't condone like, his views but i like yeah. his shirt I, I don't mind some of his music too. Don't let anybody too. stranglehold is fucking great. <laughs> one of the greatest songs of all time. It's got such a good riff. <laughs> and I know when I play it, and everybody's like, "Is that Nugent?" I'm like, "No, turn it down." It's like being caught singing to a Celine Dion song in your car, right? When you're There's stopped no at a red shame. light, and like "Power on. of Love" comes on the Skip radio, it. and you're like, "I got to turn this up," which means I got to roll up the windows. No one sees me <laughs> singing this song. It's the same thing. <laughs> Admit it, we all do it. Uh, or a Nickelback that. tune that comes on, like Photograph. Every time that song comes on, no matter where I, I am, I'm like, changed. Oh, I, I unironically nah. like Nickelback. I genuinely don't. see. I don't <laughs> like that song, but I do like, I like some Nickelback. some of their stuff. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Sorry. long story short, um, Sorry to sidebar us here. what did we see yesterday, Karima? Like, at us. did we see a change? Because I, you know, we posted the story. Nobody else is on it. We're the only people on it. Obviously, it got a ton of traction. Are, are, did we see a bit of a sea change? Because I've seen a lot of tweets. I've talked to a few people that are like, that is not good for Doug Ford. And I know he's polling lower recently, but like, do you, do you get a feeling or a vibe that this is one of those things that might change the course of how people feel or think about Doug Ford and the conservatives in this country? I, I mean, I think it's possible. Just don't forget that we were out banging pots and pans in support of nurses, right? But then... By the same token, it's a lot easier to be performative in support than to actually care about issues. And that's demonstrated by the fact that th there hasn't been any needle movement on Bill 124 um, or on really holding the government to account in ways that will actually support healthcare professionals. And certainly the, the Doug Ford sort of sentiment on Twitter, I think, has always veered negative. Um, and, and now even more so, and, and perhaps with a greater sense of urgency, um, but Twitter isn't real life. Um, so will this actually what? translate into real life concerns? And, and one thing that is interesting is, is people in threads commenting that, you know, there's fewer conservative signs than I might ordinarily see in my area. And I get the sense that, you know, the tide has shifted, but what does that actually mean i don't know i don't know yeah no i mean either it fascinating though i mean we're just in the weirdest fucking time in the i, I don't ever remember anything like this like i was watching him walk into that that debate and watched his wife get shoved by the way real chivalrous putting your wife at the back of the bus going that ah, fuck who cares about her like get me in there like that's all i saw he doesn't give a shit about his wife there was a um, cheesecake in that green room well, i'm telling yeah. you and that's why that he was like smiling everybody's saying he was smiling on his way out. it wasn't because of the people it was because no, of the no. cheesecake yeah, was, you knew there was going to be one of those little personal self-serve cheesecake things in there. You could just grab, like, one might have a little cherry on top. One might have a little lime. It doesn't know. Who knows? A little bit of Graham cracker crust, Oreo crust. Cheesecake's the best. We're I agree try with them all that. today. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, go ahead. Sorry. Why? It, it, with, the, with respect to where you guys are at politically in Ontario, and I just, I, I'm sorry, I do get a great chuckle out of the fact that you have Doug Ford... <laughs> leading in the polls right now with all of your fucking it's hard criticism to of Alberta. Is this the guy from Alberta? I'm sorry. Jason yeah, this Kenny, is, yeah. This is the Jason <laughs> Kenny guy. You're about to get Ontario. You guys dick. make fun of us all the time and Doug is running away in the polls right now. But hold on. I mean, we can crap all over Cheesecake Doug if we want. But is there not a case to be made for the fact that he is where he is and he's in the polls right now where he is? based on the fact that there is nobody that's given him a good run for his money. Like, listen, I don't know politically what you guys are up against in Ontario to the point that you guys do, but anytime I see any of his opponents speak, I'm just like, cheesecake, 
Doug's going to walk away with this one again. Like, I'm sorry. I, we, well, why we are none problem. of them talking about like this nurse incident as far as I'm aware? Like, so, okay, we can't get that through mainstream media for whatever reason. Um, that seems like a story to run with if, if you're in the liberal or NDP war room. The only, I think, I think they're waiting right now. I think, uh, I think Andrea is waiting for uh, Steve Del Duca to say something so that she can just criticize what Steve Del Duca says. That's the problem with the left in this province. <laughs> yeah. It's our That's left is more point. split than the right. We yeah. see the, you see the polls. You can, you can see the uh, the PCs are at whatever 35 percent, and the other like the PP whatever the hell they're called now PPC used to be. Um, the they're, they're 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 at seven. They're at seven percent. Blue. blue. And then you look at the NDP and the Liberal, they're at neck and neck at 26 and 25%. It's because they can't get over themselves. They can't, I need to be the first one to be more virtuous than you. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to trash you. Instead of doing the right thing and taking Doug Ford down, they're too busy infighting with each other. So we make fun of the right about splitting votes. Absolutely. But Canada has a worse problem with it on the left than on the right. Yeah. yeah. And you know what, when you, no matter who gets in in Ontario, and this is the same thing in, in, in Alberta, you're still going to have a flaming bag of shit on your porch. Yep. And that's, that's the problem true. is that we're like, it's just a different colored bag. And yeah, but the bag of shit then, uh, this, yeah, but some the of them are <laughs> some of them different aren't. volume as well in the bag. Um, some but, of them but aren't listen, as, uh, as, them have as egregious. Their ice cream, yeah. so. A lot of them aren't as egregious as the, as the right right now. Well, and that's the thing. Yeah, Ryan, you bring up a great point. That's the thing, right? Like, we, we love to, when we get into this conversation, try to look like we're representative of saying, hey, listen, everybody's a fuck job. I haven't seen anybody in the Liberal Party beat the shit out of a nurse recently, right? I haven't seen anybody in a Liberal... Like, like Karima, you went to a, a Liberal thing, and you got an ice cream and a media pass. I yeah. bought the ice cream myself, um, and I had to give the media pass back because they reused yes. it, but I actually like that. Though. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they're 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 recycling yeah. media passes. They're 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 so right. onto something though, yeah. giving away ice cream to the media. And 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 here's the I thing: bought that, the ice cream. Yeah, she bought the ice. She bought it herself. It was two dollars. I am I am a no, self-made woman who buys my own. Ice cream. Here, here, That's right. here we here we buy we buy multi-billion-dollar corporations with the conservatives, and there you're worried about them buying her ice cream cone from the liberals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but but I mean the two different approaches, right? And then you look yeah. at how we hung her getting kicked out of Karima getting kicked out of that event, and it was just this massive negative reaction, and we farmed it. Uh, and then she goes to the liberal thing, and I'm like, I'm not retweeting that. <laughs> I was watching her there. I'm like, I'm not telling everybody about the good people at the Liberal Party that invited her in, gave her a media pass, talked to her. But, but to your point, you can't you can't offer representation when the other side just isn't doing anything wrong. Were they assholes when they are injuring the McGinty years? Total fucking criminals, right? So that's a, that's a hangover that sits with me. Uh, but bottom line is, Steve Del Duca was like, we're going to increase ODSP by double. Everybody's like, whoa. And then he's like, and here's the other thing we're going to do. We're make it mandatory for people to have vaccines and mandates. Whoa. Uh, and, and, and here's the other thing we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to shorten that autism wait list to zero. Here's the other thing we're going to do. We're going to help people with daycare. Uh, we're not going to force them into streams. Like everything these guys are doing has been incredible. And to the point, and I fucking hate parties and I hate political bullshit. But I'm watching, like the other day, I watched this Del Duca dude whose upper lip hasn't moved in the 50 years he's been on Earth. He looks like Fire Marshal Bill. No shit. Mm-hmm. Like, rah, 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 rah. And I'm like, well, other than that, this guy actually sat there for like 70 minutes after he gave, gave a press conference answering questions for 70 minutes, answering questions from people he'd never met before in a public setting with cameras going. Not something Doug's been doing for the last two fucking years because they manage him so tightly, right? Like yeah. the dude has to take a fucking binder with him to <laughs> to debate because he, he doesn't know what he's he has no idea what he's doing. He's that fucking useless. Like he's yep. so fucking useless, it is out of control. And he might win again. win again. He might. Yeah, he's I know. Win. You're right. You're absolutely right. Because some people just don't care. They. they I was having this conversation on uh, on a DM today with somebody that said they can't do anything. Uh, they can't do anything else other than vote blue. Like they just. It's it's ingrained in them so hard that the. Anybody but the liberals, right? So we we're never going to get out of that until you see actual change, and you're not going to see change when it comes to um, 
like Del Duca, Del Duca's good. I didn't like the way he he mm. sidestepped the like they, they were they, obviously they were bringing up the questions about um, Kathleen Wynne and he and he there he was right in saying that we shouldn't be doing the 2018 so election. You know, I don't want to I don't want to get into the details. Of- no, 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 sorry, I, I won't. I'm it's just a quick thing. The, 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 you 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 seem to blow him up. I'm going to take some air out of his tires a bit. He's he's not good at, at being accused of, uh, uh, and he's not good at at owning it. I said something to Ashley the other day. I said. I said, if you want to take the power away from a skeleton that's in a closet, you first have to own the rotten flesh that was on it, that it came from, right? Yeah. And he didn't do a good job at doing that. So well, dude, now then, we're stuck then, with people that will vote blue, even if you put fucking, you you put anybody, you put fucking Hitler in there and they'll fucking vote for him. I doubt that. Anybody but liberals. You know what I mean? Like, it's I think just, that's, that's a stretch. the mentality. Hitler might be a bit of a stretch. I'm, I'm <laughs> taking some license. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Let's start making struggle with an analogy that's worse than Doug Ford, because literally that's what it is. We have yeah. Doug Ford. We have. Yeah. You're right. You're. You know what? You're absolutely. You know what? You're right. I should just change it to that because mm-hmm. it's the fucking reality that we're in, and it's and it's frustrating. It's frustrating that people just can't see that they're literally shooting themselves in the foot every time. Ah, you do, dude. We're we're on and we're an uninterested country. You're right. Uh, you know, and, and the people who are interested are the people who are marginalized. And let me challenge everybody before I get to this That's next the beauty clip. Of a like, democracy, go, by the way. Is that what you have to do if you have privilege is give it away. That's right. right. It's never been more important. If you're a white dude, and I'm talking to you, white man, and I know I got a lot of white guys that watch this show. We got three white guys on it that know a lot of white guys uh, that, that have some privilege and influence. It's true. Is that we got to give it away. We got to stand up for that. We got to stand against that, and we need to stand up for it. And we got to stand up for the marginalized and give their privilege away because that is the greatest gift that we can give people. Karima, did you see this one clip? I don't know who sent it to me. It might have been you, Locke. Um, I found this one interesting. He, Doug, was canvassing in his neighborhood, and uh, two guys were in his neighborhood because in his neighborhood there are several rub and tugs. Did you know this? No. No. Uh, anyway, I want you to watch this. These guys are asking Doug where they could find one. He seemed to know. Watch this. Oh. <laughs> we got Doug. We got Doug. Doug. Hey, hey, Doug. Everything going on right good, there? Good, good, good. Yeah, Where's bro, a good Doug, place for our nice Robin talk? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks. <laughs> Thank Have a good one, guys. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah, every man. Like, hey, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know he knows where cache escorts are. That much oh. I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if I could do one of those places. <laughs> I we have them all over Alberta. They, they're oven tugs? They, no. Really? Yeah. Yeah. There, there's you know what? I will say this about the rub and tugs in Edmonton. Can we is they, <laughs> they kind of what? It's the Segway King. It's a segue. We haven't we haven't segued to Rub and Tugs yet. It was just a little Doug Ford segue, but we'll get into Hold Rub on. and Tugs. I don't want to do it with Kareem on the show though. She might lose her fucking law license. <laughs> no, no, this this wasn't. Sex work is work. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Rub and Tugs. Thing. Yes. I, I, here's it, this is this is again another way of looking at it. And and somebody pointed this out to me in Edmonton. They kind of do one of these things with the with the ay, 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 they they do that, but. What they've You're done no is rub and tug. Allowed, See no rub and tug. That thing. Yes, they've allowed them to operate, and what they do is they keep sex workers off the street. Not 100, yeah. percent but it is a way of kind of regulating that industry without saying, "Okay, here we're condoning it," and and yeah. that's why I'm 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 kind of okay with it. Yeah. Um. Not that I would ever. Um, use one or like go to one, uh, but I, we think I definitely not think too much. I think I think it definitely is something that um, is good for that for that industry because yeah, sex work is sex work is work. Listen, I'm not talking yeah. down about rub and tugs. Like uh, friends mm-hmm. of mine own own one, and and uh, they're <laughs> lovely ladies, and they really are, and 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 they do good business. Muse, they kind of take care of that group. That group. 
right? You, Muse massage. Yeah. A very high end, very like taken care. I, I've never been, would never go. Not that I look down on it. It's just not my bag, right? Like it's just not one of those things I do. But I found it interesting that Doug was like, yeah, that's right. Where is a rub and tug? We could both use one right now. Not bad. Just around the corner. Uh, downstairs, second door on the right. You'll find it. Don't worry. Tell him Doug sent you. Get a deal. <laughs> Mine hasn't worked in months, but. They yeah, still know who I am. Yeah, here's a frequent three flyer card. Out. Take it with you. <laughs> hey, the tenth one's free. There you go. Uh, Do anyway, they have stamp Kareem, cards too. Uh, I think so. Yeah, they got stamp cards. For frequent visits, like how yeah, you go to co- the, you pull the thing off your coffee cup for McDonald's. It's the same thing. And they just hole punch it every time. Yeah. They just have an ink pad, but they don't have a stamp. You know what you need to do. Yeah, you know you gotta do. Uh, Kareem, thanks for doing this. Sorry to end on a sexual note. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, have it any other way, I'm sure. I'm sure you would, actually. I think you're lying. <laughs> I think she's lying. I can't imagine it any other way is actually There we go. Uh, <laughs> you keep up the good fight. Are you doing any um, Are you doing any Fordsy events this, this week? Or, or have you had your fill? Or are they not allowed? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I, I, I keep checking because they're not very transparent about where he's going to be, if you can imagine that. Um, uh, I can. But uh, I, I always have my eyes open. I haven't done an NDP event yet, um, so that's also on my list. Um, or a That'd new a blue one. So. Oh, the new blue some... one would be fun because those guys are like way crazy, by the way. Yeah. Uh, have you been uh, Have you been keeping up on the news about uh, about the convoy people that uh, are in court? I hear they're trying to get Tamara Litch mm-hmm. uh, conditioned again. Yeah, so, so she is accepting some kind of award. Uh, in June from the JCCF. Um, 500 bucks a plate and Rex Murphy is the keynote. <laughs> I was going to buy a ticket and then I couldn't because um, I just figured I might be turned away at the door um, and can't, you know. Anyway, so yeah, they're what they're looking, um, I think tomorrow she's back in court. Um, kills too. And, and that's maybe a violation <laughs> of the bail condition um, to not be on social media, being supportive of the condo convoy, um, yeah. so we'll see we'll see how that transpires. Um, other convoyers, uh, I don't King. know what's going on with Pat King. He's still in jail, which is fucking dude trends every day though, right? And 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 it's amazing because it's like I've never ever seen like the the longer he stays in jail, the more he's hated. Like and yeah. and the more we see incels popping, angry people running around shooting people yeah. around this world. Every time it happens, Pat King trends in Canada. He's like the poster boy for that stuff because of the great replacement theory that he was a huge and still is a big advocate of, right? Like, I mean, uh, that's, again, not something we've talked about with you, Karima, but uh, it, it, it was amazing how that great replacement theory really kind of put all the stuff that happened with the convoy in a little bit more perspective, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, but I do worry to some extent that Pat King, uh-huh. who is um, – a loud mouth um, and puts himself in the forefront um, easily can turn into sort of a scapegoat in the court of public opinion. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that it's important to kind of stay fo- like fo- focus on what's relevant about him, um, but we should also exercise caution and not get fully distracted because we don't want he's martyr. very easy to hate. Mm-hmm. Too easy to yeah. hate. We don't want to martyr him either, right? Never, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay, Karima, listen, we'll, we'll, we'll let you go, but uh, thank you so much for being here again. Really appreciate it. And thanks for taking that video the other day. I know it's uh, it was a stressful thing for you to do. It's stressful for anybody that's involved in watching that stuff to record it. And I totally understand why you didn't put it out first. And it's obviously the responsible thing to do. Not something I would have done. I would have been totally irresponsible and put it out and created a narrative around it that was totally untrue. So way to go. <laughs> Good to see you, Karima. Yeah. Talk to you thanks, soon. Karima. Karima Saad, ladies and gentlemen. Sadvocacy.com is where you can find her. Just the best. Mm-hmm. Just the best. And, and how she is everywhere is She's beyond me. Like, it's just like, oh, yeah, Karima's got video of that. And yeah. it's like, oh, she must have just grabbed it from somebody else. But no, there's her scooter. <laughs> and there's her. Dude, they, they sent me this video yesterday. Or yeah. a couple. Yeah, it was last night. And uh, Lori tagged me in it. And then Ryan hit me with it. And um, the lady who, it's her video. And she put this video out. And... It, the video goes nuts as soon as we retweet it because it's just so fucking gross. Hmm. And Karima hits me with a tweet. She's like, oh, I've got footage of that. I'm like, How? why didn't you put it out? She's like, well, I didn't fucking know what happened. It was like two days ago. 
That's and fair, like, though. That, that, that's a response. Yeah, she thought it was an arrest. She thought yeah, it was just somebody being arrested. arrested. But yeah. that, and that's how other news outlets were playing it off. Like maybe someone got arrested, maybe someone got. Arrested. But that was how it was portrayed. That is what Doug Ford's people told the media that what happened. Just someone that was out of control. No, and that that is a lie. That is not what happened. Yeah. Doug Ford's did, personal security intentionally hurt nurses that were that, asking for a raise. Hurt them. Salt. Yeah. Did that video that got uh, that you posted from the yeah. nurse? Did they send it to other media outlets? It just seems odd that that they tried. That, they, yeah, they tried originally. They, they tried it. and they got nothing, and then and then finally it came to us, and we exploded it. As usual, we're the ones that here we are doing the actual work of let's show people that both sides of what's going on. And like, seriously, every single news outlet, their uh, main tags were on there. Their reporters' tags were on there. No, not a fucking peep. Zero. Huh, so I, none. Said, I told I told people last night, and it, the timing last night of it of it breaking was perfect because I, like I told people, I said this is this is a great time for you to learn. You saw this explode. You saw all those media people get tagged. This is a litmus test to what you consume for media. Now you watch and see what happens in the morning when they all run with the story. And it was crickets. Nothing. It was fucking crickets. Yeah, dude. Nothing. So, Nothing. And and yeah. and it was a beating. This was it like happened. a beating. This happened for, for real. These are Doug Ford's personal security guys in suits. And you can see the police going, what the fuck are you guys doing? Why are you hurting these people? Like, look yeah. at that cop. He's looking at him like, what the fuck did you just do? I think he actually Toronto said police that. He did. He, yeah. You can go yeah. back and you can see it. Let's go to the front of this. So Doug, so you can see Doug Ford security, a male, a white male dragging a woman of color, a nurse, well, and then, then the black other female. Girl. The, uh, the other nurse gets pushed over top of her, too. Yeah, yeah. you can see it right off the start. And yeah, then I want you yeah. to watch the cops look at the, his personal security and go, dude, what the fuck are you guys doing? Watch. Yeah. He there he goes. Flying. And, and he I want you to see. Over top of her. Totally. And then this cop, look at him. He's like, what are you doing? And then this other cop on the left, he's like, not him. This, this guy here, he just came in and see, he looks at him, He goes, why did you push that guy? What the fuck is going on here? Those are all personal security guards that Doug Ford employs, and he's employed a lot of them for a long period of time, is my understanding. Some might be OPP. Generally speaking, these guys don't give you their names or their phone numbers or their addresses, but those are personal security. And the guy right there with his back to us, that's the guy that pushed the gentleman, and now he's trying to get in there and see if he's okay or maybe change the narrative. I don't know. But these are the two guys that you see that are that hurt these individuals. This the redhead guy, the ginger fuck, he dragged this poor woman out of the way. He's holding her back pavement. from helping him. Yeah. He just broke yeah, a nurse's just, face. It's just, you know, like, like even even if I don't know, it uh, we're making this political, obviously, because it 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 it, it is. But uh, let's, no, man, let's I'm not. Just, but I haven't. I mean, this is about Doug Ford and his values. I haven't. Like, yeah. it's sure, is he conservative? Yeah, but I never bring that up. I'm talking about this absolute degenerate piece of shit and everybody that subscribes to him for power and influence being allowed to do whatever the fuck he wants including dummy nurses asking for a fucking fair shake in public and it's That's not what like this is. listen you're you're running for the leadership of the Ontario uh, uh you know the biggest province in the country you're gonna get groups of people out that don't agree with you um and you're gonna have to deal you're gonna have to maneuver your bus <laughs> full of cheesecakes around this yeah right like um i i don't know it, it just seems odd that the press ignored it what about the star isn't the star a little more liberal leaning why didn't they run this I don't know. It seems odd. I, I I would have had uh, the stars actually been on him about a few things. I haven't seen this. Maybe they're they're coming up with an op ed on the weekend. They've actually been pretty good recently. Mm -hmm. uh, the sun, not a word. In fact, a piece that Brian Lilly put made it look like it was the nurse's fault. Yeah. Um, <laughs> everybody, like I mean, everybody that is uh, in the pocket of the conservative government in this province, every media outlet is to some extent, uh, with the exception of a few. Uh, has been threatened by them. I've been threatened by them. Uh, everybody that speaks the truth about this individual is threatened. It is political tyranny at its finest, and he does it with a smile so it doesn't look like it is, but that's what this is. Mm -hmm. The other thing I mean, that he does it well is that he's really boiled down um, the, uh, like, I see his ads, and it's like, are you sick of 
your commute time and it's like wow you're gonna win <laughs> and that's and it, it, he's every man he tries to play that every man card and it's, yeah and it works yeah it does the dopey work. bastard it, the dopey bastard card i see it all the time yeah Ooh. well they call it what they call it during during the uh the know. pandemic premier dad and that was actually yeah. something that they fucking fabricated they wanted that pushed make him like a father figure make him that's why he cried those big crocodile tears every time he cried about something that was fake as fuck right so it's it, it's it's politics that part's politics but what we saw in that video that's not politics that's no. not democ democratic politics no I'm sorry that's yeah. exactly what you said that's political violence that's it's political I hope, violence though, i want to say this out loud if that wasn't a ford function and that was somebody that another function i i would like to say that we would be playing that video absolutely without you, question okay, fuck All yeah right. i just want without to say question. that out loud oh yeah totally yeah totally if if dude trudeau this morning got all because I don't know if you heard Russia kicked out all the Canadian media, kicked yeah. them all out. If you're a Canadian media person, you're in Russia. You got the boot yesterday. We're not all going now. Today. What are you doing there? So, you know what Trudeau on. does, which I found really fucking fascinating. He's like, I can't believe it. Censorship in Russia, media censorship. I'm like, uh, Bill C-11, the do no harms bill, <laughs> uh, the streaming act. You fucking idiot. Yeah, like hypocrite dude I, I call him i'll call anybody out that that is hypocritical that lies and is not yeah. interested in the greater good like he doesn't trudeau doesn't even know what fucking day it is if he's tweeting stuff like that i can't believe in censorship he's got three bills that he's trying to ram through that censor the internet in this fucking country yeah so don't like i, I I'm, I'm no wilting flower i fucking hate all politics and I don't go after the parties and I don't go after the ideologies that much. I go after the ideologies of terrible people. And those terrible people all happen to sit in the same party right now. And you're watching Doug do something very different to Pierre Polyev. Because Pierre Polyev, who's running for the conservative leadership of this country, Holy went on Peterson's podcast the other day. Jordan Peterson, the guy whose cries loot lost his mind. Uh, made fun of a big girl on Twitter the other day, thinks that women should be deserve to be sexually harassed for wearing makeup. That guy, mm -hmm. he goes on his podcast lock. Did you see? Did you see? Let me play this that. fucking yeah. clip. Yeah. So, yeah, like, yeah. And, 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 and listen, this is exactly the problem right here. This is the problem that we have is that this guy, Pierre, is speaking to every single person who's Anglo Saxon, and that is it. Uh -huh. Watch this. Fucking bizarre. What makes you credible on the hope front, do you think, in terms of your what you're offering and, and who you are? Because I speak clear, plain language that makes sense to people. So, you know, I'm I'm a believer in using simple um, Anglo-Saxon words that strike right at the uh, the meaning uh, that I'm trying to convey. <laughs> Anglo-Saxon. Anglo-Saxon, by the uh, way, is the race of people in the Great Replacement Theory that are told to go out and shoot black people. Yep. That's Anglo-Saxon. European Western civilization. He's only speaking to the Anglo-Saxons. He said yeah. it. And Jordan Peterson, king of the incels and Anglo-Saxon incels, was on the other end of it asking him for that content. Mm -hmm. That is what Doug Ford is. The reason you, why he's not you, talking about that, the, whole, the reason why Doug Ford isn't talking like that, like he's hiding, is because he's talking to all Ontarians right now, trying to trying to steal their votes, trying to steal their fucking principles. So he doesn't say those parts out loud. Yeah, for sure. Listen to this. This is yeah. fucking incredible. What makes you credible on the hope front, do you think, in terms of your what you're offering and, and who you are? Because I speak clear, plain language that makes sense to people. So, you know, I'm I'm a believer in using simple um, Anglo-Saxon words that strike right at the uh, the meaning uh, that I'm trying to convey. Not bad, huh? What's he doing on that podcast? <laughs> Five million YouTube yes, subscribers. That's why he's on that podcast. And he called him out. Like, he called him out in his uh, in his uh, uh, debate, saying that he was reading his book. So he probably chased him down. 
Isn't that fun? Isn't that crazy? I just I think that's a bad move. Like I he is, Pierre is making some big mistakes, I think, right now, isn't he? Or, he is, or is that side just okay? I mean, I, listen, we've had enough conversation about Jordan Peterson uh, that we don't need to get into that. But, I mean, clearly anybody, even people that know him and are fans of him, are starting to realize that he's slipping. You have to be aware, like the people that are – that are making like give helping you make decisions about what you do in a day um, to, to, to gain the respect of the, the voting public um, are there can't be a situation where they think it's a good idea to go on Jordan Peterson's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like it ain't there. That cannot be a good idea. Like what's going on? Like what is happening? Yeah, if you're called a racist, like, uh, you know, Gaslighting asshole going on Jordan Peterson's. Podcast. What are you doing? Isn't going to help what you. What are you doing? Reinforcing like, his or, perspective. Or it'll reinforce not, it. You're right. Like, are you completely giving up on the possibility that anybody with a normal functioning brain is going to vote for you, Pierre? Like, is that what this is? This is just, that's, that's what yeah. this is. This is, I am so hyper focused on that far right group. They're going to get me in, they're going to give me money. That's all I care about. I do not care about representing the bulk of Canadians who might he, look at the Jordan Peters thing and go, yeah, you know what? Listen, Anglo-Saxons, just the anglo I got a kid in the family that's reading his book right now. I actually plan on talking to him this week. I'm going to take him to Tim's for coffee and make sure he's okay. Because I found take, out on Twitter him. that he bought his book. Like, that's what's happening in the world that we live in right now. Like, literally, people adults real functioning human adults with brains are going Ugh, my kid is he bought the jordan peterson book he's yeah. 19 you know what he's working at jiffy lube he's you know he's he's a little he doesn't he's not sure about the future he's confused he bought the jordan peterson book. i'm gonna go talk to him make sure he's okay that's where we're sure. at but fucking one of the leaders potential leaders of the conservative <laughs> party went on podcasts <laughs> And told him that he gives hope to the Anglo-Saxons, and that's who he's speaking to in a multicultural country. No, no, no. <laughs> the Anglo-Saxons, and I do it with simple language so the dumb fuckers can understand it. Like, what's and going on? He could have just on? said simple English. That's all he could have. Meanwhile, he's he's running to be the leader yeah. of a, a bilingual country, but... Um, Try yeah, he's going after the Anglos. He's like, yeah. dude, I'll, I'll play it for you again. Like, I want you to watch this, everybody. This it's is like... This is so hard for me to digest. And it's not that he has an opinion, right? I don't care that he's got a different opinion. Mm -mm. But when you, you're vying to be the prime minister of this country and someone says, who do you give hope to? And you go, the Anglo-Saxons. <laughs> you fucked up. What makes you credible on the hope front, do you think, in terms of your what you're offering and, and who you are? Because I speak clear plain language that makes sense to people so you know i'm i'm a believer in using simple um anglo-saxon words that strike right at the uh, the meaning uh, that i'm trying to and 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 what would that meaning you're trying to convey in anglo-saxon words reading? Two Anglo-Saxons. What would that be? Anybody? So anybody with a guess? Uh, no. Anybody with a guess? What that meaning is? He's trying to communicate to with plain Anglo-Saxon speak to Anglo-Saxons. Who do you think he's? What is the meaning? I'll tell you the meaning. You're, You're in trouble. Most, yeah. You're in trouble in this country because brown and black people and Chinese people are coming for your stuff. That's what he's saying. That is one of those really fucking incredible dog whistles to someone's base with five million people that might watch it. And he knows. And listen, he's endearing himself to a whole new crew of people south of the border, north of the border. And that's what he cares about, dude. He's in this for the fucking dick showing. He's not in it to lead. He's not in it to be a good guy. He's in it to increase his profile because he's been a shitty little MP for the past 20 years. And he's never had a real fucking job. Like Doug Ford. Where did he get all his shitty MP loaded? for years? Never had a real fucking job. Inherited his fucking business from his dad. 
Like that that's is what we're dealing with. This is the entitlement in this group of people is absolutely astronomical. And all they care about is protecting that entitlement. And so who's the most entitled group in this country? Who should be afraid? Everybody hands up the honky. Yeah. The, the Anglo-Saxon. Like yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Exactly. Isn't that nice? I, um, I, I read, because I, I'll, I'll, I'll admit something here. I didn't pay attention. Don't tell my mom. Uh, I didn't pay attention to the um, the term uh, like my whole life. It's one of those I, I'm I, that's a privilege I guess I have. I just Anglo Saxon never really. I knew wasp was the thing, you know, white Anglo Saxon <laughs> Protestant whatever. But I so I'm like, you know, when I heard him do this and I heard the outrage, I'm like, you know what? Maybe it is. I should probably look this up a little bit. So I went to the Smithsonian Magazine had a, a really good article about it, and the term. Anglo-Saxon was uh, kind of like abolished because its association with whiteness and uh, white supremacy uh, is saturated. Like it fucking like seeped into our lexicon so far as part of an America first caucus um, seven page uh, far ideology Trumpy fucking thing was actually put out and they used the term in there for that reason. For the reason of the fact that it, it appeals to white people that don't like people of color and white people that are uh, un- or uniquely Anglo-Saxon that like political tradition. And like people were joking. They're like, should we go back to trial by combat and sword fights and thatched roofs then? <laughs> like you fucking Duels? Idiot. Let's have yeah. a duel. It, it, See, it's it's incredibly exclusive. It's incredibly fucking like, and, and so I and I after reading about it, I went fuck. You're right. You know what this? If this isn't a woke thing, it has always had that meaning. So when you hear whistle. somebody say, "Well, we said it all the time in the yeah. '60s and '70s," yeah. Well, you know what else you said in the '60s and '70s a lot? The N word, yeah. a lot, and the <laughs> F know? word, and the yeah, G word, yeah. and the all R word, exactly. all the good stuff. Yeah, exactly. we've evolved, and they and they're so sad they don't get to use those words anymore. Oh yeah, and that's all. This that's is. what they're protecting, dude. That's the yeah. dog whistle. Lock, you were going to say something there, sir. Well, I, I think we have to be careful when we start digging into the um, comments like he made. I mean, to me and, and to most people, I think it, it, it's obvious what he's doing. And you're right; it is a it's a dog whistle. But it's the the reason why he's smart is because it's easy to it's easy to defend that statement like we've pulled this clip out um i don't know if we've lost a bit of context on the front on the back end maybe he explained it a little bit more um and and it's easy for to somebody that's not i'm not a huge fan of any political party i'm particularly concerned about this individual because i think he's going to be the leader of the conservative party and that's kind of where i lean when i vote the thing about that clip is it is very defendable because if you take a look at it at face value without digging into it, which is what we're doing, and face value is he uses simple language to convey a message to the voting public. Why did he have to say Anglo-Saxon? He did He did that because we all know he's dog whistling to that far right white Christian audience voter that he wants to go to the polls. We know that. Yeah, we're we're not dumb enough to, but it's defendable. So how is it defendable? I, I'm, it's I'm missing defendable that. Defendable based on purely on, and he will defend it if anybody has the balls to actually step up to the plate and actually call him out for it, like us. Yeah, like, <laughs> and yes. everybody like us right talking now. about it. Yeah, every single uh, person. You know, at, at any time someone says, "I'm I'm speaking to people," uh, I'm speaking to the Anglo-Saxons. Yeah, it's, you lose. That's indefensible. I'm sorry. You, you, uh, yeah, country, there is. An, is. It is Played very again. difficult for me I to be able to say, hey, listen, here's what he said. Here's what he meant. And everybody should be OK with it. And individually speaking, if you're an Anglo-Saxon supporter of uh, Pierre Polyev or if you're a supporter of Pierre, Pierre Polyev, guaranteed you're Anglo-Saxon. And there's nothing wrong with being Anglo-Saxon. I don't have a problem with white people. I don't have a problem with black people. I don't have a problem with Chinese, Polish Indian, Sri Lankan, uh, maybe you're from the Seychelles. I don't know what kind of nationalities there are that collect in the Seychelles or or the or the Mauritius. Maybe you might be from Mauritius. I don't care. There's Former a human Yugoslavia. being that I think that we talk to on a daily basis, a human being that has the ability to comprehend or not comprehend based on how they feel, right? Mm-hmm. 
We don't ever speak plainly to a specific race of person on this show. And the reason why we don't do it is because it's fucking racist. But I wanted to say, this is what I wanted to say. We've gotten to a point where politics is doing this now. And I think we're at a very dangerous point. Listen, what is wrong with having a platform or having a direction politically where you give a shit about everybody? Why is it that we're, why is it that this is happening? And this isn't just the concern, Ryan. I know. Everyone's doing it on the left and the right. And it drives me mental. What are we, what are we doing on the left? It it happens on the left as well. I we're not going to so give an example, <laughs> Ryan. Uh, come today on. Trudeau doing his whole thing about censorship in Moscow and all that other bullshit. That was a fucking that was an absolute red herring and a wi- and a dog whistle to his a base, but it wasn't a dog, dog whistle? whistle to his racist base. No, it was a dog whistle to and 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 to Lachlan's point. I think it's a stretch, but I think that we're talking about the extremists on both ends that both do stuff, yes. right? But I'm okay. not talking okay. about those Sorry, people. Yeah. I'm talking about this individual. I'm talking about this guy and his values and his morals and his moral compass and his virtues of which he has none because he just said, I'm talking plainly to Anglo-Saxons and that is fucking it. That's I, what is? And you know what? Here's the thing. He's like, what do you, Jordan Peterson, JPP, Amazing, you got through that without crying and talking about how uh, he, 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 and I don't know if you saw white. this, how he had a dream about his grandmother's vagina. He talked about that the other day. It was fucking oh, bizarre and how she was petting her gross. vagina. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. lost his mind. So, th- anyway, this guy goes on who talks about standing up for Western civilization and European values and Anglo Saxon values and Christian values and Orthodox Christian values, which is why he's lost his mind. Pierre Polyev wants to be the leader of all Canadians. And on then that, he says, that leader. Well, well, hang on. On that, he goes, what hope do you give Canadians? And you know what Pierre Polyev said? I give I give a group of people hope that I talk to that are Anglo-Saxon because I use Anglo-Saxon words. Like, yeah. That's okay, so, Ryan, that's I, I don't I didn't mean to I didn't mean to bowl over you, Lachlan. I'm sorry. I, like, I do want you to, to finish your point about about how it's done on both sides. Listen, we've got a guy that could potentially become the prime minister of this country based on where we're at and how votes are separated. And I, I think that it's going to be held against the NDP and the liberals for the partnership that they have right now. I, I, I know, listen, we don't need to get into a debate about what's it called. It's the coalition. <laughs> okay. We don't, I think that's going to hurt them in the next I election. I think so too. I think you're and right. I think the conservatives, and this is why I'm so scared about this Pierre Polyev or whatever, however you say his name. I think that we are on our way to a conservative leadership. And anytime I hear any of these jagoffs talk without trying to represent all of us, and this is on both sides, Ryan, mm-hmm. I'm I'm concerned because all it all that does is just divide us further. And we are in a we're in a in a in a in a trend of division politics, divisive politics. We've adopted it from the states. Party politics, you're right. And it is going to be it's gonna tear us a fucking part. That used it to make really us so is. much better than them. That used to make us that we used to be leaps and bounds above them because we didn't subscribe to that. And you're right, we're fucking falling for it. And to watch, like to your point about the coalition, um, you watch uh, Andrea and uh, Del Duca, like we talked about today, just ripping each other apart in front of Doug Ford, watching him reap the benefits. You fucking yep. idiots just made a deal federally. How are you not making a deal now How, when it matters most? They, they're so they're so focused on, like like Dean says, serving that fucking selfish, Ego. and it doesn't matter that left base. or right. The left is just as fucking hypocritical as the right when it comes to to that absolute point. and just as just as criminal i'm right. sorry that no, needs to right. be said out loud we're sitting here right. watching what the liberals have been doing to us and their partnerships with big tech i mean yep. we we've we've covered it all today and now we're tearing <laughs> apart a, a, like that that fact that he sat in sat down and did an interview with jordan peterson is just baffling to me that that's a two sign hours that they've completely given up on the idea of representation for everyone and yep. that should concern us all. Whether you're a, cons- I'm a conservative, Ryan is a liberal, 
I think the one thing we can agree on, and I, I'm terrified about voting conservative in the next election, federally and provincially. I'm a centrist. I'm a centrist, Spikes but I've tongue. been, but I vote, I vote conservative because the liberals scare me. I've, co- I've telling, voted conservative in the past. Yeah. Anyway, I think we should all be fucking wildly concerned about where we're heading. Excuse my tongue based on how things are continuing to roll out here politically. Decisions are being made not for all of us, but for a select group of people. And they're hyper-focused on that select group of people, and they're thinking that that's going to get them control of the entire country. We should all be terrified. We don't have strong enough leadership in this country where somebody has the balls to step up and go, I don't care what religion you are. I don't care what color your skin is. I don't care what your belief structures are. I want to run a country for everybody. That should terrify us all that that's not happening and that we don't have anybody that represents that philosophy. If somebody got up on a stump tomorrow and said, I'm going to make politics boring again, I'd be all over him. I'd vote for him immediately, right away. Just make it boring. If if someone said, I'm going to get rid of politics, I'd vote for them. Because this, we're, we're, like, ever since we started again. getting into the weeds of who does yeah. what and left and right, Losing you guys game. lost me. You're, I'd rather sh- literally take a piss in my own mouth and talk about this stuff. If you can oh, do that, like, that's rather, a good video. That's a COVID cure. I'd rather all the way up here and pee in my own mouth than sit here and talk about who does what and this guy does that and this guy. Be- Fuck that. Values, it's people, it's individuals that have the values of silly serial killers, and that's who we're talking about. You know the big problem that we're facing in this society? We haven't talked about it yet once. What's that? Out. How fast food restaurants are uh, not serving the meals that they put on television ads. That's two huge lawsuits. Did you see this? Locke, prepare yourself. Are you guys going to shit on Arby's again? No. (laughs) Surprisingly not right now. McDonald's and Wendy's are the latest fast food chains to be hit with lawsuits alleging consumers were misled by ads that showed, quote, bigger burgers with more toppings. (laughs) There is more important things in this world, people. This is the Washington Post, the most fucking uh, chaotic time in in civilization. They're like, let's talk about this lawsuit. (laughs) These fucking losers in the States are like, we're missing 20% of the meat and the toppings. Justin Chimetti bought a Big Mac. He bought a McDonald's and the bourbon bacon cheeseburger. He bought a Wendy's. He thought it'd be big as juicy as advertised. (laughs) This is in the Washington Post. He's like, he says they were not. And now he's suing fast food chains. I'd vote Chimietti for him. sued McDonald's and Wendy's on Tuesday, accusing them of, get this, defrauding customers with ads that make burgers appear larger than they are. Please tell me he's for This goes pounds. on. The proposed class action lawsuit filed in Brooklyn Federal Court, similar to a lawsuit King, filed in next. March against Burger King. <laughs> Chimietti says McDonald's and Wendy's use undercooked beef patties in ads, making the patties appear 15 to 20% larger than what the customers actually get. The customer said that, quote, meat shrinks 25% when cooked. And We're quoted the food style. Get this, dude. Quoted a food stylist who said she's worked for McDonald's and Wendy's and preferred using undercooked patties because fully sized cooked burgers look less appetizing. He's mad, this guy. Yeah. He lives in Suffolk County, Virginia. He says both chains materially overstate burger sizes, while Wendy's also inflates the amount of toppings in the pictures. Quote, defendants' actions are especially concerning (laughs) now that inflation, food, and meat prices are very high and consumers, especially low-income earners, are struggling financially. The complaints that McDonald's and Wendy's did not immediately respond to requests for comment. A lawyer for Chimietti said, I've got no additional comment. This is the great talking paper of of 2022. You remember when that guy sued Subway last? Was it two years ago yeah. when he measured his foot long and it was only like ten inches? And yeah, he actually like eleven point two. He won in court because it was a false. Win? It was it was a false. Like twelve million. Yeah. He won, and there's the other guy that that ran like a complete. He took the tuna from the Subway sub to yeah. the lab, and he's like, "What's this in is, this?" And they're like, this "Not tuna." Fish. And he's like, "That's it. I got a lawsuit on my hands." <laughs> and and they they the, uh, look at this. Mc, this is the headline before. in the Washington Post. Like. Uh, incels are killing people around the world. We've got division, destruction, a world war Ukraine. going on in Ukraine. That's They're like screen, yeah. McDonald's and Wendy's are the yeah. latest fast food chains to be hit with lawsuits. Alleging customers were misled by ads that showed bigger burgers with more toppings. 
This is a distraction. This is called press distraction. Somebody's somebody's serving somebody by putting I that out. I love it. Yeah, the breakfast baconator though at Wendy's, guys. You Does it look like it. the commercial? Yes or no? Uh, don't care. Tasted awesome. By the way, you guys also need to get the the potato wedges. Don't yeah, say Yeah, you went no hard on the potato, potato wedges, wedges too. They're really good, and I'm not that's a fry you, guy. Like I'm not why a potato. Got the, that's why you got your next co-host on the locker room was because of potato wedges, wasn't it? I, do we need to get into that again, <laughs> dummy? Anyway, but yeah, no, I just think uh, I I think it's great. Go on YouTube and look up food advertisement, food like a food artist. Yeah, they have yeah. really cool explainers on how they actually do it. With they'll take a sesame seed with fucking glue, super glue, so that they're all perfectly spaced, and they'll fucking glue it to the top Don't of the bun. Don't we all? Yeah, kind yeah of do those know idiots that, that file those lawsuits to... not know that those are like totally fucking you staged pictures them. with super glue and like? Yeah. Like literally plaster French fries. They're There's, like, this doesn't look like the picture. Super, well, fuck, no shit. Super awesome uh, article that uh, somebody put out not long ago. If you Google it, you'll see it. Where they told you instead of this, we use this, and you're you're blown away. You're like, that's disgusting. But I get it. You know, like something that's supposed to look pink, like when the yeah. must or the ketchup mixes with the mayo. So yeah, we'll use yeah. uh, fucking cow sperm and fucking donkey <laughs> salmon and moose. It's the perfect uh, color. You know, like whatever. It's not food. <laughs> it's not food. No, what the, the pictures are taking, like the, the ads that they have are not food ads. That's like the fucking stage, like though. That's, plaster that's a, and picture and CGI. Story, yeah. Oh, and that's the only place where someone's going to file a lawsuit for 20% less toppings on one burger, like a multi million dollar lawsuit, and then incur costs on behalf of that. Like, you got to go find a lawyer that's like, yeah, I'm into this. You're right. There yeah. looks to be 20% less toppings on those two burgers. Time for a class action lawsuit. Like, you got to go and find that guy. Then you got to retain that guy. And then you got to fucking follow through with the lawsuit. And I don't know if you've ever been in a, over buns and meat and toppings. You guys are it awesome. Sounds, it sounds like States. a great idea when you're high to start yeah. this. But when you Let's come down the next McDonald's, morning. McDonald's, man. We'll get free McDonald's for life. <laughs> you come down the next morning like, fuck, what did I do? Let's do this. Reminds <laughs> me of Strange Brew. Oh, and yeah. The, Where they, they had to go. To, Trying to get free beer for life. Yeah. They're trying Elsinore to put a brewery. <laughs> it's true. Because <laughs> they ran out of beer and they're like, put a mouse in the beer, eh? It's like, okay. <laughs> Still one of my all time favorite movies where Rick Moranis put out the fire at Elsinore Brewing by taking a piss on it. Yeah. <laughs> Great one of the most movie. underrated actors in the world, by the way. Really, really is. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. boys, thanks for doing this. It's a lot of fun. We see. got a heavy today into the politics. Can we not do that again? Because yeah, just, let's so fucking let's scrap that. I don't know if it's possible for you to do that, Lindsay. I think you just you get into it and you like it's I'm like bad too. winding you up. It's like winding yeah, you up. You and Locke then start doing. Then you make me uncomfortable what? because you're like you what interrupt you him and then he what interrupts you, you and then all of a sudden you know what do you mean? What am I gonna do tomorrow? What are you gonna for? do tomorrow with, with the, the guests that we've got lined up for tomorrow? It, it, there's no way it's not going into these. Who do we have tomorrow? tomorrow? Do we not have Dave Mosscrop tomorrow? We do. Dave Mosscrop will be on exactly. Yeah, but we're talking about the values of people. We're not talking about strategic political advantages. Like, fuck. Listen, listen. Don't I took talk a poll. about that with me, please. I took an Ipsos so much. about you. And they we think could also talk about hair care products with Dave. Yeah, that'd be good. Oh, Moss yeah, Crop, that sounds like a great time. Incredible hair. <laughs> fuck yeah, you Moss guys. Crop's on the show tomorrow. We're going to have a great time with him. We'll see you then. Uh, have a wonderful day. That is Ryan Lindley, Sheeple Shepherd Podcast. Download, subscribe, Sheeple Shepherd, wherever you get your fine podcasts. Uh, follow him on uh, Twitter as well, Ryan Lindley. That is Lachlan Cross. Follow him on Twitter at Lachlan Cross. You can also uh, listen to him every single weekday morning on 957 Cruise FM. We'll talk to you soon, fellas. At 957 Cruise FM in Edmonton. And that's it for us. I want to remind everybody if you'd, you're super tired of like the most expensive internet and wireless rates in this country, go to payless to connect.ca. And it takes 15 seconds. Autofill some categories, your MP, depending on your area code, postal code. We'll get this nice little note that says, hey, you, you got to reverse the wholesale interest rates, or, or sorry, wholesale internet rates because we pay too much. It's unfair. Pay less to connect.ca. Go there today. It takes two seconds. Brought to you by our friends at Tech Savvy Solutions. Switch to Tech Savvy. You'll be happy you did. Trust me. Good people real customer service they don't pretend to hang up on you 44 times so that you don't change your bill they're good people have a great day 
We'll see you tomorrow morning. Sorry, tomorrow afternoon, 3 o'clock. David Moskrop will be our guest. We'll see you then, everybody. Thanks to our friends at Tech Savvy Solutions. Thanks to our friends at edsfineimports.com. Go to edsfineimports.com. Get yourself a pair of Gitch, G-I-T-C-H, three. That is your promo code at edsfineimports.com. He'll give you a free pair of Gitch when you order three or more. Boxer briefs, pouch in the front. Can't go wrong. edsfineimports.com. Domination. Dominate with your content by using domination.com. Domination.com is free to try. And you can do podcast promos, gaming promos, streaming promos. Takes you minutes instead of hours. It's AI for people to produce online content. Try them for free today at domination.com, dmntn.com. And of course, Easy Auto Financial, helping people get financing for cars. No credit, bad credit, bruised credit, good credit. Doesn't matter. These guys are ninjas and they don't make you pay for your financing. They pass along that cost to the other guys. That's why they're good at their jobs. Easyautofinancial.ca. Check them out today. No obligation either. Have a great day, everybody. See you tomorrow, 3 o'clock. Moss Crop. Bye.